this being what you set out to do at the beginning of the season, now that you've had about 15 minutes to reflect on it, what's the emotion like? It's uh, amazing, actually. It's, uh, you know, I've played oh, know, 14 years professionally, four years here at Cornell. I think this, for me, has been the most rewarding year I've ever had in ice hockey. You know, to be able to help this team in some way to win this championship after not very many people believing us in us at the start of the year. It was just an incredible year, and it's an incredible group of young women that as you saw tonight, they just seem to be so resilient, and, and no matter what's happening out there, they just seem to find a way. And so it's been uh, exciting, fun, it's been great. When you say this is the most rewarding year in your time in hockey, um, is it because not many people picked you? Yeah, you know, some, you know, I've been on teams where we've won championships as a player, but most of the time, you know, there's only one year that I can think of where, you know, we were sort of in this situation, and ended up winning the league, but, and maybe just, you know, being a coach and, uh, you know, first time winning something as a, as a coach, it just, uh, you know, I've had great seasons as a player, but I, I just find this very rewarding that I'm able to, in some small way, help these, help these girls to achieve this uh, here at Cornell. Was there a characteristic about this group that you picked up on early on that you thought to yourself, maybe, hey, we can really go all the way to do this? Well, it's interesting, you know, you, you start off your year and, and people, you know, peg you for a certain spot. And I, I will admit that after the very first weekend when we played Mercyhurst, I came in to the coach's locker afterwards and, and I said to the assistant coaches that, that we're going to be good. Uh, I've really felt after that first weekend, you know, Mercyhurst was number one in the country at the time. It was our first games. You know, I, you know, we made a few glaring mistakes that cost us, but I really thought that we were in both games and we played really well. And at that point, I, right at the start of the season, I thought, you know what, if, if this team can come together and play as a team and be unselfish and, and, and work hard at uh, both ends of the ice, then, yeah, I, I did feel like we could uh, be successful. To win it in the fashion in which you did, does that make it a little sweeter? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was a great game. Clarkson played a great game. I thought we played well. Um, I thought it was a great hockey game, you know, great crowd. They had lots of fans. We had lots of fans. It was a great atmosphere. Both bands were going. Uh, it was a, a great night of hockey, I thought. And just, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Take us through that final play and talk about Kenneth Ogilvy a little bit. Kenneth Ogilvy. <laughs> I just started walking in. No, I mean, uh, you know, great for her, especially, you know, after... Uh, Taking a penalty, which I didn't think she deserved, and, and then to be able to come back and score the OT goal like that, uh, I'm just so happy for her. You know, she's one of these kids that works hard all the time, works hard in practice, uh, does what you say, and, and she's uh, a player that lightens up the dressing room. She's always smiling, she's always gung ho, and just uh, just a great kid. So it couldn't have happened to uh, to a better person. Did you do any scoreboard watching this afternoon or this weekend? Uh, I didn't, but uh, my assistant coaches were, uh, they were checking out the UConn-BU game, and uh, we pretty much knew after BU won that we were going to have to win today to, to get in, so uh, I didn't let the girls know that today, but uh, you know, we wanted to focus on what we were doing here today and not get sidetracked on what things that we can't control, so, uh, but yeah, we were kind of interested to see what was going to happen in that game. Do you think they knew anyways? The result of Um... I don't think they did, no. I don't think there was too many that were really actually following it. They were, I think they were focused today and they knew what they had to do and they were wanting to make sure that they took this uh, one step at a time in this game and, and were focused on what they were doing rather than worried about what was happening with other teams. Third period with the short bench you had, did you feel like the girls were running out of gas a little bit? Yeah, I thought we were uh, a little bit, uh, you know, that's why I got to hand it to them. They just kept fighting tooth and nail even though uh, you know, we lost one player that was escaped uh, about halfway through the third, and we were short, uh, had a short bench to begin with. Um, and so, yeah, uh, obviously the longer the game goes on, the more you worry about it. But uh, to their credit, and, and, you know, coaches like Tom Howley got them in shape early on, and they've been working hard all year and keeping themselves in shape for this moment. And it's funny because uh, I think actually this week and maybe even last week when we were, you know, doing some skating at the end of practice, as I said, you know, these games are going to come down to the third period. It's going to come down to the end, and you guys are going to be the tougher team. And we talked a lot about that and about how important that was. So, um, you know, considering the, the short bench that we had, these girls fought tooth and nail to the end. 
Who went off for the skate there? Uh, Carly Overgaard. Uh, I thought she'd actually broken her blades. I thought we were going to have to change it, but uh, I guess she just needed a sharpening. After Clarkson ties the game, when you had a three goal lead, what did you tell the girls to regroup? Uh, we didn't really, we didn't, I don't think we had a timeout at that point, but in between periods, you know, I thought we played well, you know, they got a couple power play goals, but I didn't really feel like we were back on our heels uh, in the third period. I thought that they kept going after it. I thought we kept playing our game, which is taking away time and space and, and being aggressive. Uh, obviously, you know, on that penalty kill, kids got a little tired, they got stuck out there for almost the full two minutes, and uh, that's always tough. Um, but I, I thought we were still playing well, so I wasn't uh, too concerned. Uh, between the third and overtime, you know, I told them that I wanted them to go after it. Uh, you know, we wanted to get back to our aggressive style and, and get after it and, and try to end this as early as we could.